Well, I hope everybody's in the mood to celebrate KISS because today it's all about Dynasty. Or as they say in Australia, Dynasty. Dynasty. <laughs> Spelled the same. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us here on the KISS Army Things Podcast. Of course, my name is Xander. My name is Daphne. And I gotta admit, I may have almost forgotten the Dynasty anniversary. Oh no. Um, so we had, a, originally I had another idea for this episode. Right. And I wanted to do something else, but when I realized, no, wait, it's the 45th anniversary, uh, of Dynasty, I was like, okay, no, we gotta pivot, we gotta do, you know, we gotta do this, and do this now. Uh, so welcome to the Dynasty episode. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Of course, please like and follow and uh, subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, I wanted to real quickly mention our Patreon. Yes. This is something that's very new to us, something that we're trying out. So if you want uh, more Kiss Army things, if you really like our channel, our show, and you want to see some more of our content, then please check us out over on Patreon. There's a link in the description if you want. Think of it as like our own little Kiss Army Things streaming service. Yeah, You know, much. where you get like, like... a subscription for more bonus Kiss Army Things. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're always going to be having the videos here on yes, YouTube. Yes, but what we plan on doing is having, you know, bonus videos over there, extended versions of the videos here, and then, you know, do live videos and just, I mean, the other day I was posting, like, screenshots from, like, episodes and just behind-the-scenes stuff. Yeah, and just so Whatever fun. I want, basically. You know, stuff that I wouldn't normally post on the social media accounts. Right. I can post there. And uh, so, yeah, if you guys, again, if you guys want to uh, check us out over on Kiss Army Things Patreon. And as we're beginning, I want to go ahead and just give a shout-out to our two patrons right now, both Darren and Rex. Yes, thank, thank you Thank you guys so much because you guys have no idea how much it means to us that you would want to subscribe to our Patreon and get the more content. It's been so much fun uh, talking with you guys over there and um, you know just having our little uh, conversation, showing more uh, videos and extra clips. It's been a whole lot of fun with more to come. So thank you guys. And uh, Daphne, how are you today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk about Dynasty. I'm wearing I my Dynasty you even, shirt and everything. You even wore, I almost didn't even catch that at first. I yeah. was like, oh, here we go. Nice. So... I'm surprised I don't even have a Dynasty shirt. I, I almost put on a different Kiss shirt this morning, and then I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure I have a Dynasty shirt. Good and call. I do indeed. Good call. I honestly don't think I do, but I did decide to wear this, you know, really cool, uh, hotter than hell yeah. graphic t-shirt. Still cool so, 70s. Yeah, still really yeah. cool 70s t-shirt. But yeah, so today we're going to be talking about Dynasty, the last album of the 70s. Um, really the last album with the original four. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Psycho Circus had some inclusion on there, but as far as like, the original era goes, right. Dynasty Before was sort everything of... Changed. <laughs> yeah, and you can even see on the first decade gold yep. record right there, you know, Dynasty is like the end of that original era. Yeah. So uh, we'll be talking about that, and that will be our, I guess, main Kiss Spotlight. Yeah. But I do want to do another pre-Spotlight, because you told me that Amber Wilde dropped a new track, yeah, correct? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like last week, actually. And somehow um, I missed it. I didn't hear it till a few days later and then forgot to even mention it to you until maybe yes, what, yesterday or the day before? The day before, I think. Um, and yeah, we, we we checked it out. We've listened to it a few times. We were just jamming to, to it while we were setting it's up. It's called Getting Started? Yep, Getting Started. We have been waiting, waiting and waiting for a new Amber Wilde single or album since, announcement or something. Since the end of the tour, basically. Yeah. Since the end of the road. I mean, since since they started, pretty much, because they they for the longest time now they've only had two songs out. Two songs. Um, and we saw them open for Kiss um, at the end of the year, and I saw them twice. Yes, you did. And they were fantastic, and they had a lot of original songs that they did live that are not out yet. Oh my gosh, and they're great. And but it's interesting because this isn't even one of them. I figured that the next the next song out after Breakout and Good Silver would heck? be would be one of the like Lover or. Um, Oh, what's some of the other ones Constant called? Constant Constellations. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> Is it Constant Constellations? Or are you thinking of Constantly Cute? <laughs> ah, that'd be hilarious. I thought it was... I, I know it has the word Constellation. You have a phone. Yeah, look look no. it up. You might be right. I could have swore it was... It's probably just me being reminded of it. Constantly Cute. Really... <laughs> that, oh, no, that is funny because now whenever I use the word constantly, my, my mind does go to Constantly Cute yeah. from Ace Really 10,000 Volts. So I guess It's, it's kind of funny. It's, it's one of those titles that now... Even though it was only released this year, it's now forever stuck in my head. Yeah, definitely. But um, I'm interested to see the results here, so I'll give you some time to look it yeah. up. Yeah, because it's obviously not going to be on Spotify. I'm just going to have to Google it and hope, Oh, hope true. It's... 
No, you're right. It is constant con- constant Boom. constellations. It's hard to say. It's a great song, but it's very hard to say. It's, it's hard to say. But yeah, that one was a good one. Yeah, and then... Earth Three Shakes. Ah, that was yes. the, that's the one I was trying to think of. Man. Or Lover was, has been my favorite so far. They um, kept teasing Lover was going to yeah, be the next one. Yeah, and it's really good. It's one of my favorites that we saw them do live. So I really thought that would be the next one, but it's a song we've never heard before called Getting Started. By the way, in case anybody somehow doesn't know what we're talking about, Amber Wild is yes. Evan Stanley's band. Prefaced. This is Paul's, uh, Paul's son's band who uh, opened for Kiss on a handful of dates on the last tour. Uh, we saw them in Indianapolis, and uh, I saw them also in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And we even met Evan. Actually, we met all don't four? Forget, we or, met all of yes, them. Yes, we met all of them. Yeah. Yes, but we were uh, yeah, we were there in line and got to meet Evan and uh, shake hands and see the band, tell it them was how awesome, awesome they we got, were. Yep, we got a picture with them. It was awesome. Oh, so yeah. cool. And so I just want to at least preface the fact that who you know who Amber Wilde was. Right. Uh, just in case, so, Amber, wow, this is a Kiss podcast. Yeah. What, you know, it's click. No, it's Kiss adjacent. Don't Kiss worry. adjacent, yeah. So, uh, anyway, I, I did want to mention that because I thought it was good. Um, for me, Breakout is still my number one favorite. I know for it's you, silver, it's Silver, still mine. which I think is hilarious yeah. because it, those, you know, those two songs I think perfectly sum up our taste in music. A hundred percent. If you listen to Breakout by Amber Wilde and listen to Silver by Amber Wilde, that's my music those taste. Those are our vibes. And, and her music taste. <laughs> All in one. In a nutshell. But what's cool is that this one, Getting Started, has a completely different one. Yeah. I feel like. No, it's... it's. I wouldn't even put it in the same category as the other two. It's a we're whole... He, we're hearing three different yeah, songs. it's a whole different, different vibe. Um, I'm kind of impressed. I do really enjoy it. Like I said, it's not my favorite so far, but I still really like it, and it's growing on me every time I hear it. Yeah. It's um, a little bit slower. It has... I hate... I almost want to say a, a, very, a slight country kind of vibe to it for sure you mentioned that and i tried hearing it and you don't I, hear it i do hear it a little bit but not quite as much and yeah. it's because his vocal isn't nowhere near his country, voice is not and no. i'm so glad just the, that's where it would but just there the is production a little bit, a little bit the, maybe okay. i don't know there's something about it but no i i really enjoy it it's growing on me i like it a lot too um the drums, even though, yeah, like you said, it is a more of a slower tempo song and i'm more of a nutbeat kind of guy yeah uh despite that um the drums are still pretty loud yeah they are and i feel like you know, this is kind of like the one thing that is cool about a newer band or a younger band is that I feel like an experienced band or maybe an experienced producer working with a newer band would tell Thomas, the drummer, hey, why don't you quiet those drums down? Right. You know, you're playing with so much attack on this song that is more or less really chill. Yeah. You know, you need to dial it back, really feel the emotion. And yet, you know, and maybe it was intentional. I don't know. But Thomas, again, like you would see him live. He's playing the drums. Yeah, he's, and it's good. He's hitting those drums. He's fantastic. And I think it works. I think it is. I too. think it works really well. It almost kind of reminds me of you know something Eric Carr would have done like on "I Still Love You." Yeah. From Creatures. Yeah. Where it's like Paul's like "I still love," but Eric's yes. it's like oh shit, you know what I mean? It's still really cool. And it it really does work because this I mean the song is even though it is slower, it's very like you know passionate and talking about how I'm I'm just getting started. I have a lot. A lot left to do, I guess. Maybe that's the vibe I'm getting. I, I was going to actually mention this. I haven't really fathomed the lyrics yet and, and what they're talking about. Yeah. So, I mean, so from what you've gathered, what, what were you saying? Like, it's talking about... Well, he says, I'm, I'm only just getting started. So, I, the chorus is interesting, and those are the only lyrics I really know so far. Maybe we should pull up the lyrics to the verses, because I, I can't think of them Do you think the lyrics all. would even be up right now? Oh, I'm sure they are. The song's been out a week. Um, the chorus says, my oh my... One day I'll die, but for now I'm I'm only getting started. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I th- I think it's just like like I am just getting started in life, but I also know that I have a limited amount of time, and so I'm gonna make the most of it. That's the vibe I'm getting. But I'd be curious to hear the lyrics for of sure. the verses. Well, I'm glad you at least caught something. But here's the verses according to Genius.com. It says, um, "I heard the call, so I came." I found the pleasure in the pain, mm. and nothing's ever going to be the same again. But all I can say is, and of course, my oh my, one day I'll die, but for now I'm only getting started. So long to get high, years I can fly, because mm. I know I'm only getting started now. Wow. That's the chorus. Verse 2, I took a walk in the rain, I flushed my brain down the drain, mm-hmm. and nothing's ever going to be the same again. Now all that I can say is, going back to the chorus, my oh my, one day I'll die. Um, yeah, so guitar solo, and then the chorus again. So yeah, I mean, he's kind of, that's really it's, interesting. It's, was, a, 
it's an interesting song, and I feel like it could be interpreted different ways, which I, I really like about... I, I don't know if Evan is the main songwriter, or if they are writing together, or if they have outside writers. I haven't really looked into that. Um, but all their lyrics are are really interesting, and I, re- I really enjoy the songwriting. So I'd be interested to Yeah, know. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't say primary songwriter, but I would assume that Evan would be the primary songwriter. That's and what I would expect It just well. seems like, I don't know, it, it seems like he's already kind of aware of life and the fact that, yeah. you know, you're constantly getting older. Yeah. Maybe he's looking at his dad, and he's seen, he's seen his dad, too. you know, after 50 years, you know, he still gets up there and does it, but you see how... You know, it takes a toll, and so he's like, "Okay, you, well, I mean, I I see what it takes right. to get to that level, yeah, and I'm here for it, yeah. You know, I was born to do this. I'm ready to do this. I yeah. know I can do this. It's, so I don't know if we're just projecting onto it, but it's interesting because I cool song. I see it as like it's almost a mix of like hope and optimism and like you know this fresh kind of newer career, but it's also kind of sad mm-hmm. because it's looking forward to the end as well." Someday I'll die, but now I'm only getting started. It's like he's so aware of the big picture and yeah, where he's at absolutely. in his life. Absolutely. And Interesting. I think, obviously, I mean, he has a great perspective. Yeah. I mean, literally, his his, his dad's in the greatest right. band of all time. So, um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. I, I, I think it's really cool. I'm glad to see that there's a new song. Again, I think it's odd that they, weren't, they wouldn't do a song that they would play or have played live. Yeah. And maybe that's the point. I hope there's an album coming soon. I feel like it's taking so long. I've been wondering that same thing too, and it, it almost makes me think that they're, which is fine, you know, they're playing the long game. Yeah. It almost seems like they're doing the right thing in the sense, like the old school way. Yeah. Where, as opposed to just posting relentlessly on social media, releasing yeah. single after single, you know, kind of just, you know, reaching out into the air, basically screaming into the wind. They're actually getting out and playing shows. Yeah, that is what they're it's, doing. It seems like they're focusing more the on their live presence, yeah. building I do really a presence live that. while releasing singles here and there, yeah. so that when a release does come, they'll have more units will be moved. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, which I think is really cool. Um, I again, yeah, you and I were obviously pretty impatient. We've been saying for at least you know, I guess almost six months at this point. You know, where's the new music? Yeah. We want an album. We and want to be EP. different. It'd be different if we lived in California and could go to all these gigs and get our fix. Because true, true. I mean, I really enjoyed them and I really enjoyed they were watching them live and everything. So I'd love to be able to see them again and hear more. But since we're not there and all we get to see is the little videos on online and stuff, sure. It's like, we need more. I still think... I respect it, though. I still think they should have had some sort of, like, EP or CD or yeah. even a single CD or whatever. On the tour. On the tour. I at, agree. Because that just, A, more music out there, and B, more money in your yeah. pocket. Yeah, yeah. Because if you had a stack of 50 CDs, the first 50 people would get them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if they're 10 bucks each, 50 times 10, do the math. I mean, that's right. like... Yeah, that's 500 bucks. That's, like, easy money right there. And you do that enough times, that's a lot of money, yeah. so... Um, yeah, anyway, we'll just kind of move on now to uh, the big spotlight, yes, obviously. which is Dynasty. So yes. we talked about Evan. Let's get to Paul's band now. Right. We're talking about Dynasty, everybody. So yeah, this is the 45th anniversary of Dynasty. It was released on May 23rd. We're a little bit early. Yeah. We're a couple of days early. So this week, this coming week, will be the celebration. But anyway, we listened to it um, once all the way through together. Mm-hmm. And then also separately. Yes, a few times. So yeah. we're in the Dynasty mood. We're yes. in the set. I hate to say this as my opening thing, but I think it's, I've, I've said before how this is like the album that I visit the least yeah. or revisit the least in terms of, you know, whole album. Yeah. Uh, I love the songs on it and it's constantly on my playlist in terms of like being on shuffle. Right. But this is not an album that usually makes it onto my turntable that makes it out into the car. And so I enjoy listening to it, you know, all the way through this time and thought that we could just do, like, a yeah. full nine-track review. Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, a sh- it's a pretty short album. It's a pretty short album, yeah. so it may be a short review. Yeah. But, I mean, again, it, it, maybe that's one of the reasons why I don't revisit it, because it is so short. Maybe. And it's, like, for such a short album, I do wish it packed a little bit more of a punch. Yeah. Because some short albums, like, can really pull off, you know, being nine, ten songs, but... Yeah, like, one, I, I kind of agree. It's this not... This one kind of does leaving you want a little more. Yes. I which feel like. can be a good thing, but... Yeah, it's not one that I revisit as a whole album. Like you said, certain songs, absolutely, and sure. we'll get to that, but yeah. it's not as an And album. as great as the material is on this album, I feel like the album hinges on one song, yeah. and that song is the opener to the album. Yeah. I was made for loving you, so that's how we're going to start this out. So I'll just say this. Obviously, we were not there in 79. 
But this would be completely jarring. Oh, yeah. And I, I get that. Because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to think what the last track that people would have heard from Kiss. Because, mm. I mean, they did have the solo albums. There was double platinum. But side four of Alive 2 had, like, Rocket Ride or whatever on it. Yeah. Like, Rocket Ride may have been, like, one of the last songs that you heard from Kiss. And then Dynasty comes out. Yeah. And it's, whoa. You know, I, I, I can see why this album and this song in particular was such a polarizing thing. Right. Because this is not something that Kiss had done. This is kind of something that, like, Kiss and Kiss's fans were really railing against, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yeah. disco, disco was, disco like was the enemy. uncool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it yeah. was almost like a turf war where it was right. like you had the Rockers, and I love the owl in uh, Detroit Rock City. Yep. You have the Stellas and Guidos, and then you have, you know, the four guys, the four kids, you have right. the Kiss Army, and it's always like, it's like a click battle, your classic, yeah. you know, click in high school. But this, it always seemed like, Kiss was always against that, which it's funny because Casablanca, their label, was the disco label. Yeah, was primarily that kind of music. And I don't know how many people even knew that at yeah. the time, how many Kiss fans knew, because that probably would not look good in an argument if, you know, someone's like, dude, your favorite band is on a disco label. No, -uh. right. It's like, yeah, look at Village People, yeah. you know, look at all these uh, bands and artists, and then look at Kiss, same label. So... I don't know if, you know, maybe just they got infected over, over the period of time <laughs> and if they just gave in or, or if they were just following trends, following trends. And I know Paul has, you know, said that he was always visiting, you know, Studio 54 and all those kind of, right. I'm uh, sure he was all those places influenced. and he, he was like, oh, I could write this on my sleep. Yeah. It's 120, whatever it is, beat per minute songs yeah. that they write themselves, you know. And, of course, here he t turns out a major hit. Yeah. Um, not alone, though. I was going to uh, say, Desmond Child is definitely... Because it was Desmond Child and Paul that wrote the verses. Yeah. And uh, it was originally called Tonight. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. It was just called Tonight. Tonight. Okay. Uh, obviously, because you know, I, I, I've heard Paul talk about how he wanted to just focus on the moment. And mm -hmm. he was always like, these songs he's hearing, this this pop music is always about here and now. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow doesn't matter. Right. Uh, yesterday doesn't doesn't, ma doesn't matter. It's all no. about tonight. The moment. Yeah. The moment. Living so in the moment. tonight became, oh, okay, here we go. But it was more of just a verse idea. Yeah. It wasn't until he got with Vinnie Poncia, who is the uh, producer of the album, where they came up with the title and the chorus. So and Desmond Child did not help write the chorus at all, just the verses? I don't believe so. Okay, interesting. I think it was mostly just the verses yeah. and him, and it was called Tonight, and then when Paul got together with Vinny, I believe. That's right. just how, that's how the story goes. It was Vinny and Paul, because all three of them have uh, writing credits. Yeah. Uh, Paul, Vinny, and Desmond. So it's kind of rare to see a three, maybe not for Kiss, but you know, usually you only think, think about like Lennon McCartney. Right. And, Two you know, main writers. Or Simmons and Stanley, I guess in this case, yeah. your, your duo, yeah. as far as some writers co-writers go. But no, this one has three, and so it's, it's it's always funny to me how it takes three people to write a simple pop song. Yeah. But it has to be perfected and in it, a way, and it takes you know certain talents it is to write impeccably engineered. <laughs> That's how I would describe it. Most this pop song. music is. Yes, but this one like engineered, manufactured, whatever yeah, you want to use is fine. But, but this one. I, I don't. I don't, mean, I don't. I don't mean it in a negative way. No, 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 no. I mean it in like it is actually. Perfect. This one was handcrafted. And I, I do. I fully understand why it was drawing at the time, why people hated it at the time. But in hindsight, in the future, it's it's a perfect song. And it's still it was Kiss's biggest song. And it still is. And we but we we've talked a lot about this song lately, especially because the Fall of Guy, Fall Guy, and everything. Sure. Um. But it is still. I mean, now twenty twenty four their biggest, most popular song. And it's only getting more popular. Sorry about that. It's so interesting. Kicking the table. But yeah, um, I see like reactors on YouTube who will react to any and all music and they'll do throwbacks or um, they'll do like, you know, rock and roll videos or yeah. whatever and they'll choose Kiss. And the song is always, I was made for loving you. Which is so interesting because that's not... And 10, that's 20 not... years ago, I would have been like, oh, no, please, this is not the one. Right, that, oh, this doesn't Kiss, represent this Kiss is, to you. Well, you yeah. see people getting into it, they yeah, start they singing, love it. They, they love it, they're like, oh, I know this song, I didn't realize it was Kiss. Yeah. You know, and I'm always like, it's it, it's weird how perspectives and things change. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, The Elder um, has, I think, aged pretty well. Yes. Even though it was very much, you know, uh, loathed, and it was very polarizing at the time. This album, this song, you know, very polarizing, but... 
time has been good to some of this stuff. Absolutely. And it's crazy how this song can sound just as, if not more fresh than some of Kiss's other material. Yeah. No, I The agree. actual hard rock stuff. It still works Rock and Roll now. Night, we talked about how Rock and Roll Night almost sounds dated. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is definitely a 50-year-old song. But you hear I Was Made, and it's like, this could come out today. And maybe that's because, like, pop music is way bigger than rock music now. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. And so definitely and that's now, why it yeah. feels so current, because it could come out today. Yeah, pop music. Whereas rock at this point, at least just, like, basic solid rock almost just automatically sounds nostalgic just because it's not as big in culture anymore absolutely no you're you're 100 right and pop music stands for popular so obviously you know popular is what's popular and there's always something popular yeah so pop is always pop i've seen this song like just as the sound in popular tiktoks you know what i mean like not even had nothing necessarily to do with Kiss, just as the song that they're using for that video. It's crazy. There was uh, on Jimmy Fallon the other night. Um, he and I, he had he had some some guest on, and she and he both were singing "I Was Made for Loving You" on the show, like crazy. right there in the chair, you know. And she was standing up singing, and it was crazy. I mean, maybe it has to do with, do with the fall guy. Maybe yeah. Maybe it was just a song that she or he loved. But either way, it was crazy because here, I, you know, here it is, you know, Jimmy Fallon. Late night TV, millions of people watching, and yeah. they're singing Kiss. You have Fall Guy, a movie, um, an action movie, nonetheless. Yeah. And it's using I Was There For Loving You. We talked about Godzilla and King Kong also using I Was... Not yeah. War Machine. No. Not Creatures of the Night. No. Not, you know, something I Was Made epic. For Loving You. It's the disco song. <laughs> what? This, the disco love song. Like, this song is almost bigger than Kiss at yeah, this point. Yeah, it, it really is. This song has transcended it's Kiss. This song has transcended I agree. Kiss. I agree. This song is now a part of just pop culture. Agreed. You yeah. know, which I think is great. It's cool. It's, it's fine. It's whatever. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. This will be the first song to hit a billion streams. Yeah. On Spotify. Guaranteed. Now, can you tell me how many we're at right now? Does yeah, Spotify say? Because it does. I've actually been thinking about doing a video um, on Spotify numbers. Uh, for a while now, but I just haven't got to it. So, hey, Patreon it is very close it's already. A, it, it's at nine hundred and something. It's, uh, it's nine hundred and sixty-two thousand. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was at nine hundred mi- uh, or million. I, yeah. I knew it was nine hundred million. Nine hundred sixty-two million. That's so, crazy. So it'll be you know sooner rather than later before that hits one billion. Yeah, and it'll it's it's by far the highest. It's by far Kiss's highest stream the, song. The next, the, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but the next one down is Rock and Roll All Night with four hundred and seventy-eight million. Still out half a bit. It's still really good. It's no, still really good, but, but the fact that it's almost it's half, half is crazy. Half as many streams yeah. as I was made. What? That does gnarly. not make sense, it but does it does. Not, it does not make sense. I think and then I think Heaven's on Fire, you think, it was a pretty big hit. But yeah. It has even less than than that. So That's crazy. it's crazy how that stuff works. But anyway, obviously, it's no doubt that I Was Made For Loving You is a timeless classic. Yeah. And I always forget that it kicks off the album. Me too. I kind of forget that it's the album opening. Yeah. And, I mean, I guess it's a perfect opener because it is the song. Yeah. And it perfectly sets the tone. I mean, you might as well not play around. You know, if it's going to be disco and it's going to yeah. be pop, you might as well just get right into it. That's fair. Disco, pop, rock, whatever you want to call it. You know. That- yeah, it's funny how they didn't choose to, like, ease people into it a little bit. Because there are other more rocky songs on this album that could have started it. Yeah. And it still would have been more poppy and, you know, different than people are used to. But maybe it could have eased them into things a little more. I... But... If you're going to, yeah, go big or go home, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the, the second song, which is 2000 Man. Yes. Which, again, I'm usually pretty good at, like, memorizing the song order mm-hmm. for most Kiss albums, but this is one that I just kind of totally forget about. Probably because so, you just don't listen to it consecutively uh, very often. Apparently not, yeah. but 2000 Man is the second song, so we have a Paul song and then an A song mm-hmm. to uh, kick us off. So we have 2000 Man, uh, A song, it's actually a cover, as we all know of the Rolling Stones, and when I first heard this song back when I was a kid, I had no idea that it was a Stones a cover. cover. Yeah. And when Ace mentioned it on Kiss Unplugged, talking about you know Keith Richards and Mick Jagger and all that, uh, it kind of threw me through a loop because yeah. he didn't really... F- fully explain, I guess it was implied because most of the diehards already knew. He, assu- he assumed everybody knew. As a kid, yeah. I was scratching my head. I didn't quite like, get what it. Are you so talking about? It actually took me a while to realize that it was actually not a Kiss song, not an A song that was a cover from Rolling Stones. And you and I both uh, almost like separately decided to listen to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I listened uh, to it today. Yeah, I listened to it right after you. And yeah, I think I've heard it before, but it had been so long that I'd totally forgotten what it sounded like. And it was just a 
60s song basically it yeah. was a 60s rock song it's very it's very different than it's very different. the kiss one i i, I it's was very stonesy which we're not really big stones fans i'm really not i'm hate to say that sorry yeah, if that's not. blasphemy to some people well you're but, a beatles fan that's fine yeah and i just and this is the kiss podcast so who cares right i there's certain songs that are good and i respect the longevity and everything but um but just yeah i just really. have never been able to vibe with much of their music yeah. But no, it was a it was a good song, but it was just it was interesting how different it was. I feel like the Kiss version keeps pretty much the same pace the whole time and the same vibe, which I like. Mm-hmm. But the Stones version is slower and more like at the beginning, more like acoustic, and then it like has different sections of the song that sound very different from each it other. It does change yeah. style. Like, I feel like three or four times. It, it does change a lot. <laughs> yeah. Very drastically too. There's no yeah. build up. It's just no. boom. It's like immediately cut to a different different sound and a different like pace almost. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just interesting. Yeah. I'm just so used to the KISS version that's pretty consistent throughout. Well and what I noticed this time around was that because I was trying to think about this album in the in, in terms of like like context because that, that's one thing that sometimes I miss is that like, even though I do have a nice bird's eye view of Kiss uh, I can read as many books as I want and all that I don't have the in the weeds like right. you know like what's it called there's the bird's eye view and then there's a the snake eye yeah, view yeah. you know the ground level view where right. you're actually in the trenches living it um, I see Kiss as you know all around so I like being able to put it in terms of like context and right. we'll get to that at the very end but with uh, 2000 Man, uh, I was thinking about the solo albums, mm-hmm. how the solo albums were just right before this. And this song has a very similar sound to New York Groove. Yeah, the okay. Boom. Because New York Groove is the do, do, do. And the 2000 Man is, you know, my name, it is. Um, yeah. no, it's just do. Okay, interesting. Do, do the whole time. And the guitar, you know, which is, the guitar is not like New York Groove, but it has that same consistency yeah. the whole way through. Like yeah. you said, it's, it does not change very much. Like the Stones changes drastically. This yeah. one is very consistent all the way through. And if you listen to it, it sounds very akin to New York Groove, which was the a year prior, a smash hit for Ace. Right, that makes smash sense. Smash hit. Yeah, and, I'm sure that was intentional. Good catch. And not only that, but again, Ace has a second song on the album, so you're seeing the effects yeah. of the solo albums here. Is this the first time that Ace has had more than one song on an album? Well, the first, you mean like lead vocal wise? Yeah. Yeah, lead vocal, the only uh, the lead vocal he had would have been on the previous studio album, Love Gun. That okay. was Shock Me. Yeah, okay. So he went from Shock Me to his solo album. Yeah. To, to Dynasty. Now two songs. To now getting three songs. Three, okay. On the new Kiss record. Yeah. Um, having been, because he was always very reserved about singing lead vocals. He would write, I mean, he wrote Getaway, mm-hmm. he wrote Cold Gin, yeah. uh, Parasite, I think he wrote Strange Ways. Uh, there's some really good A songs that he wrote um, in the original Kiss, um, even if it wasn't just more than just guitar parts, actual right. lyrics and yeah. you know, full songs. So Ace was always contributing, but for some reason he always felt, which I get it, you know, we've talked about how we're not the biggest fans of, but then again, you're putting up against Paul, Paul Stanley. Right. That's not fair. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to sing I wouldn't want to sing Paul Stanley if, I wouldn't want to sing, you know, which at the time, Peter Chris was actually the most well-rounded yeah. singer, so yeah. I still wouldn't want to compete with that. So right. Ace... Yeah, Gene, you sing Cold Gin. You're better than I am, so go ahead. Finally, with Shock Me, he was able to come out of his shell a little bit, which not only gave him the conference, but the fans wanted it. They yeah, were like, they oh my it. gosh, that song is amazing. We're getting. That's when Ace was like finally growing into the Spaceman role. Yes. Because okay. there was no Spaceman song, yeah. there was no Rocket Ride. That came afterwards. So right. finally, you're getting a little bit more Ace, and that's why I think. That's what drew it gives people. more depth to that character, and too. It, that's what yeah. drew people to Ace's solo album so yeah. much, is because well, Shock Me is great, Rocket Ride is great. I mean, Ace was always everybody's favorite because of his stage presence. It's and just sort how of, cool he was. That laid yeah. back, cool yeah. guy. You know, the swagger on the guitar. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I'm the cool guy. You know, it's like oh, that's great. So he's the guy that's you know he's the kid, the, the bad kid in the back of the class <laughs> with his feet on the desk, handing in his homework. It's folded up in the in his back pocket. Right. You know what I mean, he don't care. So that. You know, the ladies love that. The guys, oh, they all want to be him. So Ace was always the cool guy, but now he was, like, the guy. Yeah. Um, and that, that showed in terms of sales and in terms of the, the charts. And so we're kind of seeing that here. And, um, again, I don't know. Maybe there's a, a bigger reason why he chose to cover this yeah. song. Maybe I should have done more research and figured out why he covered 2000 Man. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's not, like, my favorite track on the album or anything. But it's just fun to learn about like the history and, and all this. Yeah. And one thing I kind of realized 
with this is that all of this is done by Ace. I mean, obviously the vocals are his, the lead guitar is his, but the rhythm guitar is also it's him. not Paul. Oh, interesting. It's Ace. Okay. The bass, not Gene. It's Ace. It's Ace on bass. On bass. Ace on bass. Ace on, ba- Ace on bass, wow. Ace on bass, Ace on lead, Ace on rhythm, Ace on vocals, and Tom Fig on drums. Ace is the only Kiss member on here. I did not know that. This is an Ace Freely solo song, Left Over. It's a cover, but it feels very much wow like an Ace solo album song. I wonder if it, I wonder if it was maybe intended initially mm. and was left off. Because he, there's another, obviously New York Groove is a cover. Are there any other covers on? No. I wonder if it was like maybe between, like, I, that's I so know. interesting to it's think possible. about. Like maybe he was, he wanted to have one cover on the solo album. This is just me speculating, but, and it was between those two and he ended up going with New York Groove, but still liked mm. 2000 Man, saved it for the next yeah. Kiss album. That's, no, very, it, it's very possible. Especially because he's the only one on it. Yeah, like Peter's not even on I, it. I think he had no. Peter's not on the whole album except for one song. Oh, that's. I but um, that. I, th- I I think Ace had submitted like a five song demo, mm-hmm. and three of them made it to this album. Okay. Like two of them, I don't think ever got released, but three out of those five were the three songs that he had yeah. on this album. Yeah. And what I think it's, that's pretty cool. That's you know, Ace impressive. was, was yeah. getting leverage now. He, yeah. he was getting. Some more songs on the album. So, um, yeah, there were some slight lyrical changes we noticed between yes. the Stones ones. I didn't really fathom that because, again, I wasn't really a big fan of the Stones version. So, uh, when we when I listened to the original version, it said, I'm the 2000 man. Yeah, they said the uh, just about every time, I think. They Whereas said, A said, I'm uh, a yeah. 2000 man or a 2000 man. Yeah. yeah. So, not really a big change there. But there was another one yeah. that was a big change. It was um, A said... Ace's version was spacing out and having fun. And the other one was something completely different. The whole thing was just a big put on. Yeah. Or something like that. And Ace's was like, which I think was so interesting. Was definitely, you know, a lyrical change for the better. Yeah. You know what? It's funny. We were talking about the lyrical change in The Fall Guy. Feel the tension, feel yeah. the magic. Yeah. This is kind of the same thing, but justified differently with yeah. Ace. Well, and it's almost like <coughs> reverse in, in the fact that the, the lyric was, I feel like, more negative and darker before. Right. And he kind of made it more fun and positive, spacing out and having fun, um, which fits because his cover of the song is a lot more upbeat and not as dark. So True. I wonder if that's why he chose to change True. it. I also noticed that, um, this is not really significant, but I also noticed that Kiss added the comma in 2000, whereas the Rolling Stone version, Rolling Stone's mm. version is just, 2000, like the numbers with no with commas. No comma. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why they chose to do that. Okay. Because I honestly feel like the Stones version makes more sense because I, as far as I see it, they're writing about a man from the future to them. Which is And so wild. I think I think they're saying the year 2000. Mm. So, I, so I thought it was interesting that Kiss adds a comma. And yeah. I don't really know what it means in that context, like the number two thousand. I don't know whose decision it was to put the comma in, so that's a good, that's a good observation there. But the song itself, mentioning you know being a two thousand man, a man from the future, and talking about having an affair with a random computer, yeah, which kind of like almost predicts like online dating or yeah or online like online cheating and, and all that yeah. stuff and it's just like oh my gosh I've always thought that like it was pretty prophetic in that nature but it still just blows my mind yeah the lyrics are very interesting it's How a very point. it's a very interesting well written song by Mick and Keith they were looking into the future remember that one uh, Skrillex song where they sampled uh, Jim Morrison talking oh, yeah. about computers yeah. and how people will just be using well, tapes that. and machines in the future one person using computers to make music and it just completely predicted dubstep. It's yeah. just weird stuff like that. That's just it almost gives you like goosebumps. Yeah, it's creepy. But um, yeah, it's only rock and roll, but I like it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, the third song. Oh, my favorite track on the album. Is it really? 
sure no something. Oh, okay, sorry. I, I, I thought it was something else at third. Oh, <laughs> that was like, <laughs> no, for sure. Gotcha. No, yeah. I agree 100%. Sure no something. This is one of my favorite. Has always been, oh, top 20 kiss songs. This is one of my favorite kiss songs of all time. Top 20 for me, absolutely. It's so good. Now, my, my personal preference is the MTV Unplugged version, but mm. I do absolutely love the studio version as well. Yeah, no, I mean, you can't beat the oh, Unplugged version. Oh, so it's so good. good. The, this song, for me, is almost... Like, there's Dynasty, mm-hmm. but then there's Sure No Something. Yeah. And it's almost like Asylum. There's Asylum, but then there's Tears Are Falling. Mm. And the song itself stands away from the album yes. for me. And the reason why is because, as I've always mentioned, I mentioned it a lot, I'm sorry, but it goes back to Kiss Extreme Close Up. Mm-hmm. Day one of Jeb and I being a Kiss fan. The first song, first video, Unholy. Yeah. Second song, second video, Sure No Something. And it's that video, it's those scenes and those moves that they're doing that are just embedded yeah. in my brain forever. And it's funny because as a kid, I thought that once they showed Unholy, which was obviously the new version of Kiss, the current version at that time, Kiss, they went back to the beginning. And I thought, oh, this must be like the earliest version of Kiss. Yeah. This sure knows something, this glam version right. of Kiss. And then they became a darker heavier band because then it plays some of their other songs so i didn't quite have my timeline because it was day one of me being right. a kiss fan you were a child but <laughs> i thought that this was like the earliest yeah. video of kiss and it was one of their earlier music videos but it was not the first right um might be one, one of my favorites though yes. just because again the outfits the stage yeah uh paul's outfit we i love paul's dynasty outfit yes me too it is super awesome so that that video has everything uh it's great uh, i don't know why gene does the finger picking though you see gene in videos finger picking the bass and we all know that gene uses a pick right and it's all just for just aesthetic looks cooler, and it's yeah. all for show which yeah. you're right it does look cool but i don't know it's just always uh because i know we all know gene so it's always just been weird to me how he does that but that music video is so iconic it has the mystique it has the glam mm. and there's that one part where the floating heads yeah that is oh it's so good that is the best part. oh my gosh i can see uh, that so vividly the song itself i think is beautiful the opening bass line <sighs> just the bass line in general you can't beat that you don't really get a lot of i mean there are if i start one you know, if you want to name them they're out there but you don't really hear a lot of songs where the bass is very prominent. Right. I mean, you do have Hundred Thousand Years, you'll have Torpedo Girl on the next album, but this is a song where the bass is just up front. Yeah, it's slamming. the star. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's the star. Yeah, right next to or right under Paul at least. Yeah, who who, who is the star? Right, the star child. Paul's vocals on this song are so good. I was really appreciate appreciating that when I was listening to it in the car today. Um, his vocals on the verses especially are like so like airy and light mm. in the most beautiful way. I just, I love this song. I don't even know. I, I feel like I can't even say enough about it. It's just so good. Yeah, and you're right. It was a perfect choice for MTV Unplugged. Mm. And it's sad that it didn't get more time in the set period dot. Yeah. Because... I, in my opinion, that should have been a song that they they played at Soundcheck. Yeah, that should be a song that was played at the Acoustic VIPs. Why that should have they? been on at least two or three Kiss cruises. Yeah. It's literally one of the best songs that Paul's ever done, and it's been and it's like left out. It's and been it's like, almost forgotten. And it's also like not that hard to sing. Uh, vocally, you know what I mean? So, no, like, no, it as, was, it as, wasn't time really went, problems. as time went on and he had, you know, vocal issues and surgeries and stuff like that, like, there's no, I don't see why he wouldn't be able to sing that song. And I know that, you know, Tommy was just like probably just begging him, like, you gotta do that. Because Tommy yeah. was always pushing for those songs that you just never got, got to hear. And I bet that had to be one of them. I wonder, and I don't know why I didn't get played. I wonder more. if he just didn't because it's <laughs> because he always mixes up the lyrics. <laughs> hey. But so do I though. It's impossible so to remember. Do I. I this is one of my favorite Kiss songs, and I can never get the order correct because he sings it differently on Unplugged. I'm pretty sure if you. Li- I'm pretty sure you listen to the original Unplugged and Alive Four. They're all different. They're all three different, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is kind of funny. I did like how it got played on Alive Four though. Oh yeah. On Alive Four that is cool. with the symphony with Peter Chris and Tommy Thayer. So wild. It was first played with Anton and um, an Ace, and yeah. then it was played with Peter and Tommy. Yeah, interesting. Super Bowl. Oh, and, and Eric and Bruce right. on Unplugged. Yeah. So lots of uh, KISS members have played this song over the years, but even all though, three even, of those versions yeah, are great. Even though not all of them were 
most of them weren't there on the track. Right, exactly. <laughs> and this this song is cool because it's Paul's guitar solo. Yes, I always um, forget that. I don't know if Paul's playing lead on the whole track. I read in some places where Paul was playing lead guitar mm-hmm. on the whole track, so he was singing lead, um, obviously playing lead on the solo, mm-hmm. and then I think he wrote the lyrics. It was just him and Vinny, him yeah. and Vinny Poncia, the uh, producer. Uh, this was you know a, a co-write between the two of them. But yeah, no, it's it's a perfect song. Love it. And it's just a shame that it didn't get played uh, live more. But yeah, as we're going along, guys, please let us know what you guys think of this song. We, yes. we want your reviews, too. Especially because at the end, I have something to say at the end about the next episode. And so it's very important that you not only watch to the end, but you also leave your comments. So please do. We want to know what you guys think about Dynasty. The next song, Dirty Living, which I got to admit is one of the most fun songs it's a great song. on the album. Yeah. This is, of course, the only song that Peter Chris will sing vocals on and also play drums on. Yeah, okay. Um, which is unfortunate because I guess, I guess we'll get to it at the end. But anyway, yeah, for, for various reasons, Peter was not on the album. Uh, but Anton Fig had taken over most of the songs, all of them except for this one. Mm-hmm. So this is one where you actually do have um, Peter playing drums. But uh, what are your thoughts on Dirty Living? I want to know what I you I really think. like this song. This is not a song that I intentionally listen to very often, um, but as I was you know, listening to this album a few times to prepare for this episode, I, I really enjoyed this. I, I've always loved Peter's vocals. He has such a soulful sound. His, his voice is amazing. Yeah, he has so much soul, but so much grit, too. He and was the best singer of the original four. Yeah. In the very early, just natural singer. Like, yes. Obviously, Paul Stanley surpassed everyone, you know, but... Of course. But in the beginning, yeah. Like, just naturally. Natural talent. I agree. Peter Chris, man, had that whiskey rasp. Yeah. He had that soulful voice. He could sing songs like Beth, but also sing Hard Luck Woman and Nothing to Lose. It yeah. was like, whatever. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, he just always brings that out that soulful side of rock and roll and that, like, old school kind of vibe. And I, I really like the song. What Was there other instruments in there? Because there's, like... I don't know if it's horns so. or what, because I'm terrible at naming instruments. But there's I, I'd clearly have to fathom more some extra. There's some extra instrumentation there definitely going on is, yes. that just makes it more yeah. fun to listen to and to hear. Uh, but this was one that Peter had wrote with um, Stan Pentridge back in '71, the same guy that he would uh, that co-wrote Beth with. Mm-hmm. Um, most of Peter's songs were written w- with him and Stan yeah. back in '71 for their band Lips. I'm pretty sure most of Peter's solo album was songs from Lips that had been left over. And, of course, Lips, Kiss. I can't you know, remember that. I think so that was obviously I mean, you know, a, a direct segue or yeah. a, a natural stepping stone. But, you know, it's just crazy because I did not realize until, you know, I wanted to come prepared to the show that this was another song that was written by Peter and Stan way back in 71 that was just brought, you know, back to, you know, yeah. brought back up and reworked, tweaked, and made to fit a... The new Kiss right yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it is. Um, Peter sings uh, drums one last time, which means this is the last 70s song to feature all four members. Wow. Um, Dirty not, Living. Interesting. Dirty Living, because I, I, didn't I, I mean, know that. I'm pretty sure it's, and I didn't, I didn't hear anything about Ace not playing lead or Gene not playing bass. Uh, obviously, we, we know Peter plays drums and Peter sings, and assuming Paul plays rhythm. You know, yeah. This is probably the last song. To feature all, and again, if I'm wrong, somebody out there, please yeah. correct me. Let me know uh, politely, of course. But you know, just let me know because, yeah, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is the last song, which is kind of weird because Dirty Living, yeah, yeah. random, kind, kind of random. Very Nothing really random. special about the song, other than again, it is the last. Well, I mean, it is the last Peter Chris vocal, the last Peter Chris. Yeah, and like it's good, it's song. solid, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, it is one of the more fun songs to hear. Yes, it's more a beat on the album, and I gotta mention this because I almost forgot that. Peter Chris actually sang this song a couple years ago live at some event or whatever. Or you know that is I don't know if it was for karaoke or if it was like it was for some New Year's party or okay. whatever. Uh, whether it was at, at his house, a private right. party, or, or basically was, just for fun. But yeah, yeah, but there was a video that the Kiss Army just was grinning ear to I ear bet. because it was Peter Chris singing this song live. That's awesome. And I, I'm not sure what prompted him to, but it didn't matter because I don't think that song had been played live. Well, maybe it had been in some solo project, but I haven't heard. You know, it wasn't one that Kiss played live, and if they did, it was only one or two times. Right. So to hear Peter Chris actually sing the song in 2022, I want to say it was, was fantastic. That's crazy. That's it was so fantastic. Cool. And the Kiss Army, I know, loved it. Um, so 
How about Charisma? Don't we love hmm. Charisma? Charisma the is... The first Gene song we've gotten so far. We are four tracks, what, four tracks? Five tracks? Five, I think. Oh my gosh, five tracks deep. And this and is we, the first Gene. this is the first Gene song. The first of only... Two? two? So wild. So weird. This th- this is the most wild We, we were Chris having, album. like, a fathoming earlier about about the, the ratio of songs that everybody gets on this album. Because... Obviously, Peter has one. Gene only has two. And Ace and Paul are tied with three each. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting. It's crazy. And Only I mean, three Paul Stanley songs on a Kiss album. Maybe that's why I don't want to listen to it that much. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. But I, I was looking Where's at the, the Paul? I was looking at the track list earlier, and I was like, okay, what, what do I think are my favorite, like, you know, two or three songs from this album? And I was like, oh, the three Paul Stanley songs. The three Paul songs, for sure. No, I mean... It's crazy because I'll be honest. Gene's songs are not memorable on this not album, really. and it's always been kind of wild to me because this song actually get a lot gets a lot of praise yeah. from the Kiss Army. It's a good song, and then there it's are some other songs, corny lyrics that they trash. I'm like, why are you trashing this song? But yet, Charisma gets a pass. Double standards. Like, <laughs> I, I get it. Charisma. It's a very fun song. It is a very fun song to hear. It's very fun to sing. Yeah. Uh, any song that Gene sings is fun. Yeah. I feel like he has a very certain way. Of pronouncing his words, yes. and he does these crazy <laughs> vocal runs for no reason. Yes. I'm larger than a life size man. Yeah. He does all this stuff. <laughs> I got love for say. Yeah. He does that every time, and it's like I'll oh, hear it every day. It's so good. So here you go with charisma. He has Gene, you know, doing these wild Gene uh, runs. But man, if you look up these lyrics, it's they're about this long. And they mean nothing. Yes, and it's very repetitive. It's very repetitive. It's too. very boring. I really enjoy it musically, it's, but the like just it's fine the musically. repetitive nature of it is like the not vibe nice. and the feel of the song. I think is what gets it past. Yeah. Maybe that's why. Because one thing we noticed was the layering of the vocals. Oh yeah, I where do. you had like Gene singing real high on one, but then there was one where it was Gene talking real low. Yeah, real low. High singing, low talking. I like, love Ooh, that. Okay, it worked. And I'll be honest, again, this is one of those like you know solo album things. Is like it feels very much like Gene's solo album. Okay, maybe. Where he was talking about you know you, know, you write me sexy letters and you put <laughs> he's playing into this like this this Playboy rock star right, vibe. Like, you're obsessed you know, with like, me. Like all the girls love me. You know, right. everybody wants me. Maybe, maybe if I say it, it'll just be true. You know, whatever. And so here's like the peak. Of that, yeah, and you know what I think is hilarious, and we've I've also mentioned this. I'm going to mention it on the podcast. You have this new term. <laughs> I was literally today, thinking this just now in the modern day. This term riz, riz. <laughs> what is which, my riz? <laughs> which a lot of like you know young kids will say, and I love it when the, I love it when the Kiss fans say that we're the young fans. Right. I'm like yes. You know, keep me Thank young you. because there are <laughs> like some, pushing thirty <laughs> because there are kids out there that have these terms and lingo, which they always do. Today that I'm trying to keep up and follow with, and I got this new one. That's not even new. Anymore. It's not even new. It's, it's not like even new. It's about two or three right. years old. But Riz is yeah. like this word, and it's just short for charisma. Right. So I think it's, it's funny. just like charm. I would know? love to see this song come back in terms of like a TikTok trend, ah, that'd be good. or in a Gen Z trend because yeah, yeah they're like, is it my sexuality? Is it my fortune? My fame? Right. Is it my money or my name? You know, whatever. What is it? Is it my charisma? Which, by the way, is the wrong usage of the word. What is my charisma? It's not. It should. It's not. What is my charisma? Is what gives me charisma? Why do yeah, I have I guess. charisma? It, it's not it's, technically correct, but the, it's the technically, message... It's grammatically not correct. Yeah, but the message gets across. I, the, Which I think is funny. The grammar doesn't bother me. No. Um, but, yeah, I do, but li- I do like it, the idea of that coming back. And this may have something to do with Howard Marks, because Howard Marks has a co-write on this song. Howard Marks was their, like, business manager or something. Yeah. And I think he may have another co-write somewhere, maybe on Gene Solo album somewhere, but... Howard Marks has a co-write, and I think it may have been a joke between him and him and Gene about this song, What Is My Charisma, using it that way, using yeah. it wrong, and just wanted to, like, I think Gene was very kind to give him the co-write, but he wanted him to have it because I think he, he was came up with in the concept, on it maybe, yeah. It was some sort of inside joke, I want to say, between them, right. and it just became a song. Now, whether, funny. whether it was actually from Gene Solem or not, I don't know. But again, putting it into context, 78, solo albums, 79, Dynasty. Yeah. And you look at Stern or something, that come that you just sounds right off a of Paul solo album. 
And then, you know, we already talked about Two as a Man and how that sounds like very much like a, uh, an Ace song off his mm-hmm. solo album. So, Charisma, you're also seeing a song that could just be right on Gene's solo album. Yeah, definitely. So, all of a sudden, this disco pop flavor isn't really coming out of nowhere. Because when you look at Paul's solo album, it was mm-hmm. very poppy. It was yeah. very, like, sophisticated. Yes. And, you know, melodic. Yeah. And then there was a song on Ace's solo album, and it's escaping me now. Um, I'll, I'll grab it, though, real quick. Because I love grabbing stuff off the shelf when we do these. Um, I think it's uh, What's On Your Mind. Mm. It sounds very much like a song that would be on Dynasty or Unmasked. You know, so, so it's like they get, were already experimenting with this. You're getting these preludes. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, the four solo albums, they weren't together as a band. So they were kind of doing their own thing. And right. it's kind of, oh, what would work here? What would work there? What would, you know, what's going to chart? What's popular now? And then you kind of reconvene back together, which they really don't. Again, you have Ace doing his song by himself. You got Paul doing his own solo, singing lead, writing his own songs. Yeah. Uh, this song was only written by Gene and Howard. So yeah, Dirty Living could even even be on Peter's too. This is not even facts. This almost this is really Dynasty just, is almost just a patchwork of. Like, I, I don't I, I don't want to word it this way, but I can't think of it. Well, it is. Way it's too. a patchwork of the solo albums. It's a albums. patchwork of like solo album like rejects almost. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> or just influenced by influenced what by they had done. leftovers. Especially you know. because we know they weren't really working together much on this, so it's like no, and you can tell. Yeah, no. the, that that's why I think to me this isn't one I revisit because it does very, seem very disjointed. It's not very cohesive. No, it, as it's, an album. Well, I mean, it it is kind of cohesive, but it doesn't feel like Kiss cohesive. Right. Yeah, you know, it feels again like. Like solo albums. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, I like Charisma. It's fun to sing. Yeah. It's still uh, not one not of my favorite song. songs in the album. Not one of my favorite Jane songs at all. Um, but it is fun. Yeah. And and that's a good way to sum up the album, yeah. I think. It's fun. Agreed. Um, Magic Touch, though. Oh. Magic Touch is one of the ones that actually stands out. Well, Again, this could be a Paul song. Yeah, I think this one, more than any of the Paul songs, would be on the solo album. A hundred percent. Somebody say that. You know why? Why? This song was written by Paul alone. Okay. Yeah. There are no other writers on the song. He's the only member of KISS to play on the track. Mm. It's his lyrics, it's his vocals, it's his lead guitar, it's his rhythm, and it's his bass. Wow. No ace needed, no gene needed. I got this. Me and Anton. Anton on drums. So unless there are some background vocals on these right. songs, which there could be, you know. I think it's all I think it's all Paul though. You're seeing again, this is a magic this is a Paul song. Yeah. And it it really you could just slot it anywhere. I feel like on his seventy eight solo album, and oh, it would be what's, seamless. Ooh, man! I almost want to do something fun. This is not planned. I want to do something fun. Okay. What song would we take? Oh, off of Paul's from solo album to put Magic Touch. What, what song? What song would we take? This is for you guys too. What song would you take off of Paul's solo album to put Magic Touch to on? To replace. Okay. This one, I almost want to say. Either take me away or hold me touch me. Take me away? Absolutely not. No? Hold me touch me 100%. Okay. I could never touch Take Me Away. Take Me Away is my favorite song in this album. Oh, snap. My bad. For sure. Bro. I love that song. I think it's just one of the slower ones. Oh, so. it's, no, it's, a, it's one of those ones that builds and it's oh, it's so oh, good. Oh, yesterday. Yeah. Okay, okay, for no, sure. No, I'm not touching Hold that. me touch me. Hold me touch me is... Hold me touch me, gone. Me, uh, touch. It's got the same thing, same vibe. Yeah. I'm cool with taking off. Hold Me, Touch Me, and Putting On Magic Touch. I agree. Uh, either way, I want to know, again, something Which fun. is funny, because wasn't that the single? <laughs> Which is a crime, by the way. I know I've talked about that before, yeah, but are you kidding me? Yeah, that's the one me? on Kiss 40. I, I listen to Kiss 40 all the time, and when I hear that one, I'm like, why is it not Tonight You Belong to Me? Right. That's, that's a no-brainer. But then again, but then again, Beth charted. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> and Rock City was, that was the A side. Beth was the B side. They turned Fair. the B side over, or turned the record over. Start playing the B side. Yeah. So I mean, they were all going for the 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 schmoozy stuff. I mean, not really Ace, but like definitely Paul and Peter. Um. Anyway, that's really fun. I want to know what you guys think. What song would you take off? Because this is very much just a Paul song. Yeah. Um. But for me, this song came to life on One Live Kiss. Oh yeah. When he did that oh, DVD that, that we watched. Oh, that was I need to watch that again. That was one. Because again, I could argue that you know he should have played Sure No Something. Mm-hmm. But when compared to Magic Touch, this has been played even less. Right. So I think it was the right choice to have Magic Touch, too. and I this song was. just comes alive on Magic yes. or on uh, One Life Kiss. <sighs> he and his uh, solo band playing that dude. 
I know we've talked about it a million times, but if you guys haven't seen that, you need to. It oh, is get it, get it. It's, it's so worth it. It took me, it took me forever to. Oh, we opened it on the podcast back when we got it, but yep. yeah, it, it took me forever years to find a copy. Uh, I've watched clips for years on YouTube, but to have our own copy to watch it like that was oh, it's great. So good. And we found out it's on Spotify too. Yes. So it's like kind well, of yeah, its, like as a live album. It's kind of its own album. So um, yeah, Magic Touch is great. Uh, song number seven. Hard Times, mm. uh, the second of Ace's offerings on the album, mm-hmm. my personal favorite. Really? This song, Hard Times, oh, one of my favorite tracks on the album, and I slept on it for many years. I think I need to, I think I still need to fathom it. Because I, you know, didn't really give it the time of day, and I don't know what it was, but it was sometime back in high school, right around junior year, senior year, I, I, I heard it, and it was like hearing it for the first time all over again, it finally made sense. It wasn't a space ace song. It wasn't right. a spaceman song. It was a Paul Daniel Freely song. Yeah. You know, this is this is the guy underneath the makeup. Right. This is the guy that got me to be the guy I am today. It's like more real. And it's talking about the grind. It's talking yeah. about the you know the the struggle in life, and you know being on the streets of New York and growing up and you know they talk about like. You know, skipping school, spacing your head out. You know, you know, Ace was involved in gangs. I'm not sure if you knew that or not. Yeah. But Ace was involved with gangs. I think Peter was too. Um, New York is you know a pretty rough place, a uh, pretty rough place. And so this song kind of shines a light on that, and I like it. I think and I, I I think it's cool how you hear Ace talk about how um, he's learned from that. You know, mm-hmm. I what's he say? You know, I don't want to be there. I don't want to go back, or, or I think back, you know, and what's the lyrics? Let me look it up, because I'm just completely butchering <laughs> this. You would think a Kiss fan of 20-some-plus years would know the lyrics off the top of his head, but no, I don't. Your boy's losing it. Oh, yeah, the hard times, dead and gone, the hard times made me strong, and the hard times have made me see that the hard times ain't where I want to be. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't want to be there or even think back. I don't want to be there because I'm on the right track. Mm, wow. um, Ace has talked about how saving, uh, playing guitar saved his life. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that he started playing guitar, being in a band, being in a roadie for other bands, and getting involved in that got him off the streets, yeah. got him out of the gang life. And he said many times, if it wasn't for Kiss, if it wasn't for music, if it wasn't for rock and roll, if it wasn't for playing that guitar... I would be dead. Yeah. That saved his life. That's and so, crazy. you know, being in Kiss and making it out of the streets is what saved his life. And so this is a perfect autobiographical song. Yeah, it's a lot. I, I don't think I had really digested the lyrics of this one. I this, need to go back and listen again. But it, it's... For real. I, I definitely think so. Because lyrically, it's one of Ace's most impressive. Yeah, and I feel like it's one of his few that's really, you know, less... Just rock and roll showmanship and more like raw, vulnerable. And less like space, moon, yeah, stars, yeah. cosmic, whatever. Yeah, and less it's just character and more like his really actual him. feelings. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And when I heard Fighting for Life mm-hmm. off oh. of 2000 Volts. It's almost like the new version of Hard It Times. made me think of this. Wow. And I was like, yes. Yeah, I mean, I it like was that. like a full circle moment and it was really cool because Fighting for Life was like hearing Hard Times all over again. Yeah. Uh, it's a I dirty, like filthy rat fire, you know, dirty, filthy rat fire race, whatever it is. You mm-hmm. know, again, it's talking about the old days, the struggle, the grind, and how you have to work for it. What did he say? You get grab a guitar and play on. Mm-hmm. Play on. And that's what got him out of, you know, the streets and so, mm-hmm. um, and into the, the rock world. So, yeah, this song has always been great, and I love the tie in with, um, yeah, Off of 2000 Bolts. That's so, awesome. Um, I love, I love this song. It's one of my favorites off the album. Anton's drumming is great, the fills. Uh, is really great. Um, yeah, one of my favorite Ace songs, for sure. Um, X-Ray Eyes, not one of my favorites. I'll just be honest, X-Ray Eyes is kind of a forgettable song. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's got a really cool title, though. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it just it just suffers from wimpy production. Yeah, it just kind uh, of wimpy feels production, a little half-assed. W- w- yeah, wimpy songwriting. It's not, uh, not very strong. Again, it kind of feels like one of Gene's looser ones off of his... You know, solo album. Mm-hmm. So it, it kind of um, makes sense why this song would be at, towards the end. Although you're not ending strongly. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, written by Gene uh, by himself. Alone? Okay. Written by Gene by himself. Uh, he sings, plays bass, and rhythm guitar. Okay. So it's just him and Ace. Ace plays lead. You can tell. This album is you, so bizarre. You can tell Ace <laughs> plays lead. But uh, it's just him, Ace, and Anton, really. Okay. Interesting. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, 
But I wanted to ask the Kiss Army something because this is something that I've always heard, noticed, but forgot about it, never brought it up. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody else talk about it. But longtime Kiss fans, what is happening at the three minute and three second mark? There is a weird sound effect that have a weird scratch sound effect that happens in the song, and really? I'm almost compelled say, for you to pull it, up, it? pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. It happens like at 3:03. 3:03. And it's like X-ray eyes. Ah, there's like this little scratch noise that I don't know if it's like intentional and I'm just missing something, or if it was an error and it was left in because of production cost and it just wasn't. There was no delete button like there is today, but it's something that just it's crazy. So if you want to go to like 2:55. Oh, okay, okay. I, I do hear something, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's weird. Very interesting. I, I don't know it's, if it's a mistake and it was left in there, or if it's, like, meant to be something, like an x-ray sound effect. I don't know. It's, it's, it's really huh. weird. Interesting. I've never, I never would have noticed that. Yeah, and, and, and it's funny, because we almost didn't hear it. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? Just right, and this is, like, a phone speaker, so maybe, True. like, on headphones or in a car or something. Yeah. It'd be more obvious. But I don't know. If anybody else has wondered or they haven't has any insight, please let me know, because yeah. that's one thing I've always noticed but never have actually talked about out loud. Interesting. So, boom, there you go. Uh, X-Ray Eyes, yeah, again, it's, it's a fun song to sing. It's got good harmonies, but as far as being a standout track, no. It just doesn't have a lot of substance no, to it, unfortunately. No. Um, unfortunately not. Like you said, this is definitely, I feel like, Gene's weakest album as far as his songs that he sings yep, I agree. Um, lead on, which is a bummer because I love a good Gene song, but... These two just don't quite do it for me. No, no. They're not uh, the demon that yes. we once knew. You know, Correct. that almost human, that god of thunder, yeah. uh, just not, is. it's just not there. Uh, you're getting more of these, like, like sappier songs. Yeah. Uh, like, again, like you, you might have got from his solo album. Mm -hmm. But the last track on the album, track number nine, is Save Your Love. This is the third and final Ace track. Ace has the album, Closer. Yeah. And, um, again, not really a standout track for me. It doesn't I really... I like this song. You like it? Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I, mean, I, I like it. I like every Kiss song. Right, of course But it's do. not like, oh, this is a banger. Or, yeah. You know, this is out of this world. It's, it's crazy. No. I, it's just... I think maybe if I if I went back, especially now that I I mean, understand the lyrics on Hard Times a little bit more, maybe that one would climb higher up my list. But okay. on the few times that I listened to the album, this was actually probably my favorite of the three Ace songs. Um, because honestly, I mean, it's no secret if you've watched us before that Ace's vocals aren't really my favorite. Right. I, I never lean towards the Ace songs. I don't really like his solo stuff that much personally. Right. I, I love him and I like, you know, I loved seeing him live and everything, but I just don't love his this his voice. So um, Cherry Menace is not a song that you listen to a lot. No? Not not on the regular, no. <laughs> oh man, so I gotta get me some Cherry Menace song. Yeah, yeah, you're the one. Anyway, go ahead. Anyways, um, but I I I feel like his voice was a little bit different on this song than some others because he has. Save your love, I don't want. To. I don't Sorry, I'm like being mean. I don't feel like it's that bad. <laughs> like I I feel like not. the way. I don't know. We all know he pronounces things kind of weirdly, the way he says things in songs. But this one, I feel like, was not so dramatically like that. Um, maybe, I guess you disagree, but... Just wanted to save your love. But I guess. I don't care. It's I, guess. I don't care. It's I fine. Guess. It's still but a good I, song. I like this song. I like that it's it's more a beaten up tempo. That's yeah. what X-Ray Eyes just does, you know. And yeah. I think Magic this is Touch pretty... is good, but it's, it's, again, it's also very monotonous almost. Right. So this one, at least, is upbeat. I thought it was a good It's harder. Closer. It's rocking... Anton's drumming on yes. this is there's a couple really cool drum parts that are super awesome and I want to mention this because I think this song might be the first song in the entire Kiss catalog to feature double bass drumming. Really? It's not Eric Carr. It's not something for Creatures of the Night. It's Anton, Anton Fig, Fig and I think it's on this song. Okay. Because there are parts in the song where he's yes doing really quick you know single notes on the pedal but you can clearly hear there's a couple other ones like maybe on the four or you know one two three whatever it is you know where he'll switch it on to the double kick and you can hear alternating notes as opposed to just a single note yeah and i think he's doing double kick that's awesome um, at about at least two times during the song very subtle it's very low in the mix the drums in this album are weak mm -hmm. not very powerful yeah. the kick drum even less so it's just barely coming through, and 
anytime Kiss uses double bass in the future, it would do the same thing. But just hearing it here, you gotta really focus in, really listen in, and especially if you're a drummer, you'll know when you hear double bass. Because I'm like, okay, I'm hearing single notes, but ooh, ooh, right there, there it was, double kick, you know? So it just sounds like, to me, double kick. I think this is the first track nice. that uses double kick Good in the catch. whole album. That's cool. Uh, so I wanna know everybody else's opinion too. If, if you guys hear it, um, maybe I'll throw a small clip in the episode. I'm not sure because YouTube will sometimes get me on copyright. So right. I, I gotta be very careful. I only do things to if it's either funny or if we're referencing it or if it just makes sense for context or whatever. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, it's still cool that Ace got the album closer. Yeah, it's just not the strongest um, I agree with that. album closer uh, or song on the album. But it, it is what it is. Um, the whole album itself is very very fun. And again, I was talking about wanting to put it into context. And we've already talked about how the solo albums have kind of affected this, but it gets it gets even it gets even deeper than that. Okay. Um, so Vinny Poncia is the guy who, and most of these guys know, but I just wanted to kind of you know tell you this is that Vinny Poncia is the guy who produced Peter Chris's solo album. Okay. Um, that's who you know Peter had produced his album, and when it came time to do Dynasty, the relationship in the band between the four was deteriorating. Right. And Peter's attitude was, if Vinny doesn't produce this album too, then I'm outright quitting the band. Oh. And I'm not making excuses. This is what's going to happen. You know, I think it was just Peter wanting to have leverage. I think it was Peter wanting to have input. Yeah, we're yeah. using my producer, whatever. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. But Peter... Interesting. I didn't know, I didn't know that. And Gene and Paul gave in to that demand. Yeah. Uh, because Gene and Paul were, at that point, doing everything Trying they could. Save trying yeah. to keep the ship afloat but yeah. i mean as we all know those four solo albums that's where the crack started right that was the beginning of the end and we're seeing it leak out here and so peter demanded that vinnie be brought in to produce the album vinnie comes in and really helps i mean he's the producer steers the band towards this disco sound yeah that would really lose kiss a lot of fans but also end up becoming Kiss's biggest song 50 years right. down the road. Yeah. And it's funny because, again, Peter Chris was the one that brought him in. Well, Vinny's the one that said that Peter Chris's drums, uh, uh, drumming ability was deteriorated mm -hmm. and substandard. And he wasn't going to allow him to be on the album. Wow. That's why Anton Fig came in. So look at, look at how all of these domino pieces it are just... It kind of backfired for Peter, didn't it? That demand. Well, <laughs> everything is happening, so, but, again, so fast, but it also affects the future. Look yeah. where we're at. This song was just featured, and you know none of this would have happened if it wasn't for all this. It's crazy how you piece it all together, and it's just wild. Right. You know they do four solo albums, and Peter makes his producer come in, who actually kicks Peter out of the project and gets Anton to come in, and it just becomes this thing. And you know, again, you lose fans, but you appease critics. It's like yeah. Kiss's biggest song. Yeah. But you're losing a the big portion fans. of your fans. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it was just that. I think they were getting older, and the older kids didn't want to see. I mean, Kiss were wearing capes, for yeah. crying out loud. Kiss had capes for the first time ever. They had colors, you know, their own four colors. That's also something that kind of transitioned because you had the four solo album covers with their colors, and then now Gene's got a red cape. Right. Ace has his blue costume, and Paul has his purple costume, and yeah. Peter has they wouldn't his... Have, they wouldn't have his continued big green. that without the solo albums. And it's glitzy glamour and all color and it's like that wouldn't have happened if they didn't have the four the solo albums the four affected solo albums. everything the f that was just a huge which i mean we all knew that yeah we already all knew this but when you just piece it all together it's just it's just always interesting it's almost think, overwhelming yeah it's always and I, interesting and i feel bad because this is where again everything kind of fell apart yeah Go ahead. Um, it's always interesting to think how like one seemingly minor thing affects literally the rest of your career. This is why time travel movies always have some drastic yeah, change. Yeah, the butterfly effect. Yes. Like, that's why you can't sh change anything, because it all, it's a, like you said, it's a domino effect. A huge domino effect. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so with having Anton on the album and not having Peter, this is the first time you're having a Kiss album without Peter Chris. Right. Um, we already had people replace Ace in the past. I think Ace was replaced with Dick Wagner on Destroyer because Bob Ezrin wasn't having any crap either. Uh, Vinny and Bob Ezrin were both of the mindset that the music is, and Bruce Fairbairn from Psycho Circus, you know, they were all of the mindset that the music is more important than any other musician. Right, yeah. And you can and will be replaced 
if it comes down to it. And right. so, all we have um, to do is put your face on the cover. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You don't actually have to be here if yeah, you're going to mess it all yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, contractually, yeah. sure, you'll be, um, yeah, f- credited and you'll be on the album yeah. cover and maybe we'll put And you'll you on have the- your one song. And you'll be on the tour, yeah. but if you think you're even going to be on this album in the condition you're in, because, I mean, Peter was, he had injuries, he had the drug problems, he had an attitude problem, and it was all just boiling up. And so it was just, I guess, best at that time to have somebody else. And, I mean, you look at some of those shows in that tour, and they're not good. It's and it's because of him. So, yeah. I mean, the writing was on the wall, but, again, it's just, it's just wild how all these things were happening and the fact that this was... You already had Ace replace replace Ace on the album, a Destroyer, and now you have Peter Chris being replaced. Um, well, now that I think about it, I think Alan Schwartzberg may have played on, allegedly could have played on Star 78 from Double Platinum. Okay. Uh, that may have been him on the drums. So, on a studio well, full like of Kiss though, album, yeah. you know, Peter Chris is being replaced. It's just like, I don't know, it sucks. Nobody likes to see the cracks like that happen. And um, either way, um, I still love the album. It's still a great Kiss album. Um, I think it's, you know, I mean, folks always give me crap for liking Psycho Circus because of how they have, like, session musicians and, you know, uncredited musicians. And it's like, well... What's different? <laughs> and and, and, and uh, nobody could have known that that was not Peter Chris unless you were just... Unless you just want to say that you were that good and had that good of an ear as a kid. Right. And oh, that's not Peter Chris. No, it's like no, nobody knew. It was him on the album cover. It was him singing on the album, Dirty right. Living. So you thought it was you him. You assume it's him. I want to yeah. know at what point did people realize that it was not Peter Chris. At yeah. what point did people understand, oh, that was actually Anton Thigg and he was uncredited. Oh, Unmasked, same thing. Except Peter wasn't even on the album at all. He right. was on the album cover. But no song, no singing, yeah. no nothing. Nowhere to it be was, found. It was all Anton. So uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just wild to think about all that stuff. Um, yeah, like you said, um, three uh, songs each for Paul and Ace, two songs for Gene, one song for Peter, and that perfectly sums up the solo albums. Yeah. Paul and Ace's did the best. Wow, whoa, you're right. Gene and Peter's, not so much. Wow. But 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 Gene's more than Peter's, so that's really interesting. But Gene more than Peter's. Wow. So, that, so he got that's two. That's like perfect. And Paul and Ace were both got there. About the same. You know, yeah. Ace had got up there with the guys. Yeah. And got more than Gene. So, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, even though the makeup, you know, the makeup wasn't even off yet, but yet a lot was exposed. Yeah. With solo albums and Dynasty. You know, yeah. there was a lot already unfolding. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to just at least talk about the history a little bit. I like talking about the history, uh, how it affects us and everything. Whoops, I, that always happens. That <laughs> always happens, happens to me too. The condensation, uh, not <laughs> today, but if I have a polar pop or something, I'll bring the to my to my lips to drink it, and then the coaster comes with it. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us. I know we're actually about an hour and 15 minutes oh, in. Oh, wow. Doesn't I said it was going to be long. a short episode, and here we are, you know, getting into If like, we're doing track by track, it's into, never going to be gonna short. Be, yeah, it's, it's, it's always going to be a long episode, but that's always, that's, that's fun. I'm glad you guys are still here. Yes. And I did want to show some Dynasty merch, Ooh. a couple of fun Dynasty items, uh, just because we're uh, getting in the spirit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you um, one of these to put over there. Absolutely. Uh, if you want to go ahead and do that. But anyway, the first item I wanted to show uh, today is my copy of Dynasty on vinyl. Nice. And which, okay, cool. Uh, what's special is that it's still sealed. Oh. This is a sealed first pressing Dang. from 79 that I got. I don't want to say the price, but I got it for way less than, yeah, I, than I should have. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, super awesome. I don't know how it's managed to not only stay sealed, but stay in this it's good of condition. Pristine. And yes, pristine. <laughs> 16. No. Uh, anyway, so we managed it before I feel I like. think so. Anyway, it's, it's still funny. So, anyway, here you go. Dynasty still sealed. I want to be the person to open this and listen to it, but I can't. Don't do it. I think I'm going to keep it sealed. Yeah. And I want the next person if to be the first to. person yeah. to enjoy this history. Because yeah. in here, you have the amazing poster. <sighs> I Man, think it's, that is tempting. When I think it's the cool poster. Stuff inside. It's a kiss and a straight jackets. I think. Oh, that one's cool. Uh, and then you have an order form, and then the inner sleeve is really cool with the multicolor, you know, logo. So lots of cool kiss fun to be had in here. Uh, fifth, almost well, no, forty five. This is the forty fifth anniversary. Uh, so somehow, yes, you have untouched uh, so history cool. right here. 
Um, pretty cool. So maybe one day um, I'll sell that to somebody. One of you maybe. We're not putting that up here. You guys can. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yes, I got all that out and didn't even bother to put it up. But one other thing I just had to show on the show. That show on the show mm -hmm. is the tour book. Oh, yeah. And I can think back to when we opened this on the show. I think it was Jeb, Ryan, and I on the show. And I opened this, and it was kind of fitting because Dynasty is Ryan's favorite album. Right. Uh, oh, was, I forgot was, about it that. It was his first album. He was Shout talking out, about. Ryan. Uh, absolutely. Shout out to Ryan. He was talking about how it was his favorite Kiss album, his first Kiss album, favorite album cover. And so it was just fitting that I ended up, you know, opening this up on the show and had just bought it. And I know that it is very much, you know, in, uh, you know, it's not in the best condition. It's pretty beat up. It's not that bad. But though. it's not that bad. It's a little rough around the edges. Just but to have, bad. you know, 70s Kiss merchandise. The yeah. 70s, you know, this is Kiss Free right here. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to open this up and uh, look at some of these pictures with you because I know how much you love oh, this era. Stop. And so, first of all, the blood on Gene. Yeah, right that's here a crazy is photo. Great. This photo is awesome. This is like what you would see in the music video for yeah. I Was Made and Sharon or something. These costumes are so good. Absolutely. Paul's outfit, that's right, for the music video right there. The Shattered Mirror guitar. You've got the, the Bali ad for the Kiss Pinball, which is super awesome. The photos of Gene, I mean, look at how elegant and crazy Gene's That's so good. Outfits were, it, it, was, it, was, it was out there. I mean, his costumes were already huge, but now it's just, it's just getting crazier and crazier. Yes. Oh, this is classic. This, I, this is this one of is, my favorite pictures of this Paul This is the Stanley. page that I, I wanted to see. Paul chilling with the wine glass, yes. finger in his mouth. If there was going to be a back cover to Paul's solo album, this is it. This one. The... I've had the live shot of him. Yeah. No, oh, that one. Yes. That one. Yes. I thought you were talking about that one, but no, I see that one. Yeah. All of these are hilarious. There's the centerfold with the uh, discography yep. up until that point. Casablanca and Filmworks. Ooh. So here's Ace with the space cape. Oh, I love, I love the Ace one. The cape is super cool. You can almost just feel that texture. Yes. But that pose, it's, it's almost like a... Like a peacock or something. Yes. A, a very elegant bird from outer space. That's, That's very cool. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Jungle Peter. I love it. You got like... What on earth? There's his kill. Has he killed this woman? There, there, there's, his, there's his kill for the for the night. That's his food. What? And yeah, he's just living in the jungle. That's interesting. I love this one. It's dirty living, man. I guess. I love this one, though. I always love when he has all the... What is that like... Fur or fur. feathers or whatever that is, that green fur. It's so cool. Yeah, very animalistic. I love the, so the leopard cool. print vest. Very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, these photo shoots, man, they, I mean, it was very elaborate. I mean, this is like Kiss, Super Kiss. Yeah. So this is what makes this the fourth version, and this is what separates this one from the most. The, oh, okay. From the rest is the, the ad for Gene Simmons' Sun ad, nice. uh, Sun Amps. Okay, cool. Uh, there's a photo of Ace there, and Peter Chris to close it out, which nice. may yeah. be right on the wall. You know, this is Peter right. Chris. The, you know, this is the last time you're going to see Peter Say Chris. Say goodbye. <laughs> Say goodbye. Save your love. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, back cover, really cool. Of course, again, the Four Kiss colors. colors. Yeah, they were that really leading into never, that after the That so never albums. would have been on Hot... Well, no, Hot and Hell was pretty colorful. But the first album and Dressed to Kill, yeah. some of those albums never would have had anything like this. But let's face it, man. One of the best album covers. Yeah, it is. It's cl absolutely classic. That, uh, it's, the album cover is pretty sick. It's iconic. Um, I mean, lots of great Kiss album covers are just them in front of a blank background very simple background that's but, all you need but you to have, have the up faces? close faces like that awesome. i mean again it, it makes you think of the video yeah when the faces pop up so uh yeah love that i don't know if they'll actually sit up here because of how tall it is so i gotta get creative there you go but i always come prepared so i'm gonna just let that rest right there perfect as we're wrapping up, actually, I might not because you can't even see me. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> you might just have to lay it there. Trust me, you're going to want to see me because now it's time to show some KISS merch. Actually, you know what? I was just thinking, um, I was showing some Dynasty merch. I, I wonder if there's going to be any KOL merch this uh, this week oh, for, for the 45th. For Dynasty, because, yeah. You know, there hasn't really been much in the ways right. of, you know, since... Since the sale. Since the sale mm -hmm. and since December 2nd, not much has really happened, so... This is the first major anniversary. You're right. And I'm pretty sure I saw Keith LaRoe hint at on Facebook that there would be something. I hope so. I'm excited. So until then, I guess we'll have to wait and speculate. But I, I'm hoping it's something cool. I doubt I'll be able to get anything from it. 
but I'm hoping it's more than just like oh a mug, right? A mug, a t-shirt, right? A just hoodie, the faces, yeah, and whatever. You know, yeah, I mean? like, they could do some really cool stuff. Something cool. What I don't know. Well, and that'd you be, tell me, kiss. This, this would be a good a good way for Pop House to prove themselves, and because it'd be the first, really the first thing that's put out. Yeah, if it, if if Pop House, yeah, I mean I don't know who would if it was Pop House or if it's still Epic Rights or I guess it would be Pop House, but. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, yeah, again, it's all up in the air. Yeah. I want to see what's what's, what's going to happen. Is it going to be anything new? Is it going to be pretty similar? We'll have to see. But I do, I do want to know if they're going to do any KOL merch for Dynasty. Uh, nonetheless, this is episode ninety-eight, so I am to show everybody something from the year ninety-eight uh, as part of the Kiss merch of the year. So this is a fun thing I've been doing for several episodes, and today I'm continuing it. So today, the Collector's Corner is also uh, Kiss merch of the year. They're both combined. So I want to show something that I just got, which Ooh, also coincides. Open. Yes, this happened last episode too with Rob, mm -hmm. where I got something and it just so happened to be from '97. Not even intentionally. And no. Okay. I bought something like wanting it, and then when I was going to open it, or I realized, oh my gosh, this is perfect. About to be episode '97, so I might, it's as meant well just, to be. might as well just wait and save it. So, uh, yeah, let's see. I love how there's this huge. Um, Folder, right? You have this huge folder for one for this ticket. small item. <laughs> that is a great. little ticket. They could have saved so much on shipping and posting. But anyway, uh, this right here is a kiss ticket from Market Square Arena, oh, yes. December 13th, 98. So my parents were at this show. That's this show awesome. was also recorded for that bonus CD for Psycho Circus. Mm -hmm. And I have most of my parents' tickets. I don't know what happened to this one. Yeah. I really don't. I don't want to say I lost it because I didn't lose it. It wasn't me. I don't know who Never. it was. It wasn't me. But I could have swore at one point Jeb and I had this, but we reconvened. We talked about it. We looked. And we're like, no, this is one that we're missing. So what happened? I don't know. But I, not to replace it, you know, but because it's from Indiana. Right. And I'm on this Kiss Indiana fix. I've shown Kiss guitar picks and other things. Uh, the Kiss invention mm, poster, poster from, from, from yep. Indianapolis. Uh, I've been getting some Kiss Indiana related items. And so I saw this ticket for sale on the Kiss Army Warehouse and thought, you know what, I'm going to get that because it's That's in so cool. perfect condition. It's really cheap. I got a QR code or a, I got a um, coupon code. Oh, yeah. And was able to get this ticket. Here it is. Very super cool. Yeah. Indiana I probably Kiss should have also got, I do have this. If we're just going to continue on with the 98 theme, um, I could show. I do have my dad's pair of glasses yes. from the tour. It's like a circus glasses. So here's the back featuring the faces. And then, of course, the front, which says Kiss Psycho like Circus. And everybody remember that this was basically when 3D was like rudimentary. It was just becoming a thing. Kiss, I think Kiss was the first band to ever, or first artist to take it out on tour in right. any sense of the you know, in a sense of term. So, of course, it was, you know, compared to today, very cheap. And even back then, maybe it didn't look quite as good. But it was just something cool, something yeah, novel, just something novel fun. Yeah, concept, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to put these on. I'm not going to wear them, but... Looking good. Do I look good or do yes, I look stupid? you look great. <laughs> do I look stupid or do I look stupid? <laughs> but either way, uh, no, really cool to have these. I, you know what's funny is that when I was a kid, I thought these were, like, super rare... Oh, yeah. Uh, super, like, they're going to be worth something. It's the glasses. Don't you have, like, an entire unopened pack of them? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, it's actually right there. Um, yep. I have a whole Psycho yep. Circus area unopened, right there. Not all, like, unused. I could show yeah. almost everything from right there for this yeah. segment because yep. it's all 98. All, all Psycho Circus. But, yeah, when I was a kid, Dad said, you know, these were the glasses that I wore at the show. And I was like, oh. Wow, that's so cool. They're going to cool be worth something. Yeah. You know, it is cool, but you know, when you're a kid, it's just like everything is just like heightened when you're a kid, <laughs> right. you know. So I still love these. They still mean a lot to me, but yeah, yeah no, they're just, they're just glasses from the show. But it's cool that he didn't throw them away, and I have them here. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. I love just celebrating Kiss. I mean, all we do is talk about Kiss, and I show a bunch of Kiss stuff that I get, and I think it's great. Is that and all you have to open this week? That's it. That's oh, it. I don't know why. Yep. There's more. Nope. Just that right there. Something from 98. Nice. Um, very uh, short, sweet, and to the point, but still fun nonetheless. Like I said, I love just sitting here with you guys talking about Kiss, but I thought this one was going to be a short episode, and here we are almost twice as long, so it really means a lot to me, you guys, that you guys are sitting here joining us. We're almost at episode 100. Um, you're not going to want to miss it. Please stay tuned. But before then, yes. next episode is 99. And what I want to tell you guys is that the next episode is all going to be about you. 
So for the last, I'm not sure how long, I've been saving a few comments here and there uh, that I want to bring onto the show and just do a whole episode about your guys' comments. Again, we're almost at episode 100. The show only happens because you guys are here. Yes. And we want to give back to you guys by doing a whole episode talking about your guys' stories, to your memories, uh, and of course, your thoughts on Dynasty. So yes. leave me your guys' memories and thoughts on Dynasty. Tell me when you guys got the album. I mean, especially if you're a 70s fan and you were there. Again, we're young fans. We always talk about things kind of after the fact and how it fits into history. But if you were there living the history, please tell us what it was like in 79 getting the album. Did you see a show on that tour? What was it like? What was the show? Um, just anything you guys want because next episode we're going to be talking all about that and more. So please stay tuned. And again, join the Patreon if you want. Um, we're here on YouTube as well as Facebook, Instagram, like and follow. Daphne, any final thoughts as we're uh, wrapping up? I don't think so. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for anybody who's watched this far. We see you, and we appreciate you. Yeah, and it's um, going to be the third anniversary next episode That's as crazy. well. That's crazy. So, wow. again, it's the third anniversary. We want to celebrate you guys. Episode I love how 99. I ended up third anniversary and then episode 100. Yeah, right it's after. double that's, celebration. That's perfect. Yeah, I, it, it, I, I guess it could have been cool if it was, like, all together, but, like, the double celebration yeah, uh, no, is, is, is way spread better. Out, set, spread out, spread out the celebration. There's also another surprise happening next episode. Ooh, stay tuned. So don't miss out, please. Uh, either case, thank you guys so much. Uh, hope everybody's doing well in life. Hope everybody's uh, doing great. Um, want to come back here in episode 99 and see whether we have any uh, Dynasty merch or uh, anything else. Um, I have a few more things to uh, to get to next time as far as Kiss collecting goes. So can't wait for that. I love being here talking Kiss with you guys. You guys rule. Uh, live to win, and you know what you have when we see you next episode. Until then, my name is Xander. My name is Daphne. Peace out. Have a good one.